Welcome back to Passion About Music Education and I'm Rachel Hardman and today I'm going to talk to you about limiting beliefs and autopilot habits and how they can have such a negative impact on how you turn up each day without even realising. I've been teaching as you know for about 25 years and when I first started teaching I didn't have much responsibility. I turned up and took my lessons, planned, run groups like all of us. And then as I got more and more experienced, I ended up with more and more responsibilities, head of department, head of performing arts. And I was very conscious that I wanted to make sure that I could do the job really well. So I would work through lunch times. I would be running clubs at lunchtime. I'd be using all my free periods to do all my marking and planning. And so that I was trying to limit how much I took home, but obviously I was still taking work home. And I did this and repetitively for a long time. And I got to the point where I believed that this is what I should be doing. This was my limiting belief that I had to be in work, that I had to use all my free time wisely. I had to, um, work through lunchtime and I had to try and do as much as I could so that I wasn't exhausted when I got home. Because if I got home and tried to do work at seven o'clock at night, I was too exhausted to do it. And I wasn't turning up to do the work in my best health for yourself. And then I was getting frustrated with myself, with work and everything else. And it was a downward spiral. But the problem with that limiting belief and that autopilot that I was living on for such a long time is how much that was impacting my own health and my own self-care. And I know we've been talking a lot about self-care and everybody keeps going on about it and it seems to be a buzzword, but it really is important as a starting point if you are feeling stressed and you're not sure how to find that healthy, happier version of yourself. And as you know, uh, part of the reason I started this channel was because I kind of went through that myself. I got to that point where I just was like very, very unhappy. I liked teaching, I liked music, I liked working with students, but I was finding that I wasn't loving much else about it and I wasn't sure I wanted to keep doing it. So whether you call that a midlife transition or whether you call that, you know, uh, spiritual awakening or inner child work, whichever one of those versions that you call it, they all come back to the same point, which is that self-care, that looking after yourself first, filling up your own vessel before you help others. In the same way you put your mask on first in the aeroplane and then you help others. But we are trained very much as teachers to not do that. How many meetings have you been in where you have heard admin tell you the children are the number one priority? They come first at the top of the food chain. And of course, our job is to serve children and to give them the best education and those lifelong memories, particularly in the arts. But sometimes I really think that message makes teachers think that taking that moment to step back is being selfish. And I think we need to talk more about that. That's not selfish because we have to be happy as well. And if you have ever worked in a school where morale is low, you all know that staff are overworked and because staff are overworked and stressed, the children are not happy. If the ch staff are happy, the children are happy. And sometimes admin don't get that message right, particularly in a school with low morale or you know high stress or high turnover. So although I've been through all this transition, I do feel a lot happier. What was one of the things that I changed that you could easily change over the next 21 days, regardless of whether you are working in school, in the building, or whether you're working remotely from home. I teach in a classroom and it's the first classroom I've ever taught in. It's a huge, big music room. It's a lovely big room, but it has no windows. And I didn't realize this straight away. And I was going, oh, I feel agitated and I feel a bit frustrated and lights are really bright with the artificial fluorescent lights. And I had no idea whether it was sunny and whether it was raining or whether it was blowing a gale. I was really struggling with this because I wasn't getting the natural daylight coming into the room. I also found that I was feeling tired. So one of the big changes I've made is that I work in blocks, whether that's whether I'm teaching my class or after I've taught my class and I've got a free period, I will get up and I will go out and get five minutes of fresh air. I will go and see what the weather is. I will get that just 
natural daylight and i know that sounds like i'm wasting time you go oh five minutes by the time you've gone out there you bump into somebody you have a little chat well that's a good thing because how often do we get to chat catch up with people so sometimes i go out and i'm only out there for a few minutes but i get that fresh air i connect back out in nature i take that few minutes to just take some deep breaths right down into the belly release some of the tension from the classes that I may have even if they were good lessons you know as a music teacher it doesn't matter if you have good lessons or you know bad lessons you are in charge of instruments and movement and all those potential hazards you have lots of children asking questions you've got to give out a lot of information they want you to come and listen to their work they want you to share good ideas or they're stuck or this student isn't able to work with this student and they're having an argument and you have to go and you know be a peacekeeper it doesn't matter whether the lesson's going really well or whether the lesson's not going so well. There is a lot of demand on you physically and mentally that you need those break times. By going out of my classroom, I'm going and getting those two, five minutes, 10 minutes break. I come back in, re-energize. I sit down at my desk. I go, right, what is my next task? What is the one thing I'm gonna focus on? Whether it's curriculum planning or it's assessment or it's writing a new lesson plan or yeah, responding to an email sharing some data with other people in my you know school environment that's what I do and then I only focus on that for another 30 minutes 50 minutes however much my time frame is and everybody has different blockings depending on their school and their school schedule by changing that I feel a hundred times better in the week because I have those moments to unpack the stress to just take a moment to breathe to just stop calm and then go back to the next task and for a long time i had this limiting belief that that was a bad thing to do that stopping and having time out meant that i would do more and more work at home and actually I am much more effective with my time by changing this mindset, by coming out of this autopilot habit that I've had for many years into this new way. And I'm still exploring, I'm still changing it, I'm still pushing those boundaries. Sometimes, because I'm very lucky where my school is, they have this railway trail. So sometimes when, when it's not blowing a gale and hurricane weather and all the stuff we've had the last week, I might go out for 10 minutes and walk along the railway trail you know, look at the birds, look at the trees, you know, just enjoy being outside in the fresh air for 10 minutes. And because I'm giving myself that space, I'm giving myself the, the headspace, I often come up with much better creative ideas about the tasks that I'm gonna go into because I'm not trying to throw myself into it, literally finishing one task, right, let's go straight into the next one, go into the next one, go into the next one, go into the next one. Because I, I haven't given myself just that moment of breather to take a minute, take some water, go to the bathroom, get coffee or whatever it is that you need to do and then just re-engage with can, who am I turning up for, who needs my best self, who needs me to deliver a high quality lesson plan or curriculum or whatever it is that you're doing next and that's what those breaks do and I do not work any longer than I used to but I do have more regular breaks during the day. And I feel a much happier, healthier version of myself and I'm much more effective for my students. So over the next 21 days, really consider how much time you're sat in, in isolation, working in your classroom, if you've got a room without any windows or you're working on a computer screen up from home because you're doing remote learning and sitting, and we all know sitting on those computer screens all day is so exhausting and so draining and so tiring. And really look to change that routine Break those limiting beliefs that you haven't got time, because you do. Really watch where you're doing autopilot habit. Can you break them? Are they best serving you, these autopilot routines? And really think about giving yourself those breaks during the day to refuel, reconnect outside with fresh air and to feel a happier version of yourself before you go to a next task. The reason for 21 days is there is so much studies about that if you do this routine for 21 days it will become a new habit a new identity you will make that shift just thinking about it without action won't happen but if you actually make that consistent action every day for 21 days you will then have that as part of your routine in three months time you might want to review that and go is this am i back to autopilot am i um is this new habit working for me how do i keep 
Reven re how do I keep developing? How do I keep a refreshing so that I'm always feeling happier and healthier? So I hope to see that you go for more walks, more self-care, more fresh air over the next 21 days. Let me know how it goes. Leave a comment, uh, leave a message, leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Share this video with others. If there's anything else you want me to talk about, I'm more than happy to help. I'm here to serve you guys. I look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm Rachel Hardman and this is Passionate About Music Education.